Hi everybody, this video today is going to talk about side, 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 and side, angle, side. First of all, what are side, side, and side, and side, angle, side? Well, side, side, side congruence says that if three sides of two triangles are congruent, then the triangles themselves are congruent. Remember, for congruent means the same size. They're like the exact same. So if you have these three that are marked with MN congruent to TR and NP congruent to RS and MP congruent to TS, then those triangles are also congruent. Let's take a look at some examples. So this is just yes, no. Um, let's take a look. Are these two triangles congruent? Well, XY and ZW, so XY and ZW, those are marked, and YZ and WX, so YZ, let's see, YZ here and WX here, yep, those are marked. Now, we have to have all three. And if you don't have all three, then it doesn't work. So this one's not marked. However, doesn't it make sense that this line is congruent to itself? So really, we could say that that is congruent. And so yes, we have all three sides. And so these, are, these two triangles are congruent. Example B is a little bit easier. We have it marked one mark and one mark, two and two three and three. So once again, yes, we have all three. And so these two triangles are congruent. Lastly, let's take a look at this one. They are all three marked, but look at the numbers. Okay, this one in the middle is like this one over here. I call it like the reflexive line because that would be your reason. Your reason would be reflexive property. And so this reflexive line, nine and nine, those are the same. Seven and seven, those are the same. But look at this, three and four, they have to all be congruent. And so since those are different, that that doesn't, you can't do those. Okay, there's a key word here called the included angle. And the included angle is the angle in between two sides of a triangle. It has to be in between. If it's not in between, then it's not an included angle. Let's take a look. On this example, I say that angle B is the included angle between A, B, and B, C. Let's take a look what's going on. We have A, B here and we have BC here, those are the two down here, and I'm saying that angle B is the included angle. It's the one in between. Not A, because that's not like in between them. And C, nope, it's not in between them. Angle B is the one that's in between. Let's do a couple more examples of that. So JK and KM, those are the sides that we're looking for. Which angle would be the included angle? Well, it's this one. It's the one in between the two of them. Another thing is it's the letter that's in both of them. So it's angle K because that's in both those letters, right? Let's take a look at this one. JK and MJ. All right, which one's in between? It's this one. Do you see how it's like it makes the point with those two lines? And so that's why that is the included angle. It creates that angle. Those two lines create the angle. And again, it's the letter that's in both of them. So it's angle J is the one that's included. And we didn't write that down over here. We should say angle K. And then the last one, KM and LM. All right, which one's in between? Which one's the included angle? It's angle M. Because once again, that's the letter, that's in the two names, but also that makes the angle, like this line and this line make that angle, angle M. Let's turn the page. We have another one called side, angle, side, S-A-S, -S, and order does matter. It has to go in this order, side, and then angle, and then side. And this is why we just learned that word on the other page, because it says if two, two sides and the included angle of two triangles are congruent to two sides, the included angle of the other two triangle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. And I think instead of two right there, we should say one. If two sides and in the included triangles of, let's just say, one triangle are congruent to two sides. Okay, so let's take a look. So here we have a line, an angle, and a line. Okay, they go in order: side, angle, side, side, angle, side. All right, let's take a look. And also that order can help us create our congruence statement. So once again, these are just yes or no questions. Side, angle, side, yes. Side, angle, side, yes. These match up, they work. These don't, why not? 
Well, because on this one it does work. L, M, N, we go side, angle, side. But this one, the angle's out of order, right? The angle's supposed to be here, not over there. So that one does not work. It's not the included angle, so it does not work. So the question is, is there enough information? That's a yes, no. And if so, tell which congruence you would use. So our options here are side, 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 or side, angle, side. We're going to choose. Okay, when we look, we want to look to see, are there three things? And do they match up? And do we, So anyway, we, here we have only two. And so the question is, well, is there something else that we're missing? Did we, did we miss something and not see it? In fact, there is something. And that is this angle. Do you remember these are vertical angles? So those are congruent to each other. So yes, we can say they're congruent. Why? Because of side, angle, side. Let's look at example B. Okay, that reflexive that I always talk about, this reflexive line is like shared between them. And so that's marked. So we have one there. We have an angle here but we don't have another side. There's not enough information. We need at least another side. Okay, example C. All right, again, is there something that we're missing? Because we have one, one, well, I should say one, one, two, two. We need a third side or we need an angle. Oh, right, we have this reflexive, the one that's shared. If it's touching both of them, it's like in between them like that, then that counts. So yes, this is side, side, side. All right, now example D, just like the one up above it, A, it does have the vertical angles, which is right here and right here. So those are congruent. Now the question is, is that side angle side? No, they're in the wrong order. So since they're in the wrong order, we cannot count this one. Okay, letter E, how about this one? Well, once again, we have this side. We have a side here, we have a side here, we have a side here. Once again, no, they're in the wrong order. How about F? All right, again, we have this reflexive line. But again, wrong order. They have to be in between. See, like um, on this first one, it went side, angle, side. They're like all connected. These are not all connected. They're like randomly all the way around the triangle. Same thing here. Same thing here. Not enough information. All right. Is there enough information here? We need something else. There's only two so far. We need something else. Could we say the sides? Not really. Could we say this angle? Man, it kind of looks like it, but no, it's not. Do you see how the one up above it, they're like right across from each other, and these are like kind of bent? No, not enough information. Last one. All right, this one, I think, let's take a look. We have a side, we have an angle, we have a side, we have an angle. Could we say another side? Well, yes. This reflexive line, this line that's like shared between them, it does count. So yes, this is enough information. We have side, angle, side. On this page, we are sticking with side, 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 and side, angle, side. We are going to do some proofs. So when you do a proof, you have to look at what's given. You have to really understand the diagram. You have to look at what your proof statement is. And it's like a maze. You're like trying to get from here to here, but you don't know how to get there. All right, so we're going to take a look at it. Well, we know that these two are given, so I have those filled in. And I know this is where we're trying to get to. And now it's just like, what is that bridge that's going to get us there? Okay, one thing you want to do is make sure you've marked your triangle, which this one is. It says AB and CD are congruent. It says BC and AD are congruent. Those are marked. We need one more thing, either an angle or a side. What do you think? It's going to be this one in the middle, right? We're going to say that AC is congruent to AC. And on these, you all, I forgot to put my little bar up there. Those should be up there. And so AC and AC also get one. Doesn't that make sense? AC is congruent. Well, of course they are. I mean, that just, AC, of course, they're equal. They're the same. The reason is called the reflexive property. And that's why I keep calling it that reflexive line, because it's like the reflexive property is going to describe it. Okay, now if we look and see what we have, what do we have so far? We have a side, a side, and a side. So guess what? Side, side, side is the reason that they are congruent. All right, once again, think about kind of like a maze. We're trying to get from here to here. How do we do that? Well, we're going to list out our givens, and then we're going to figure out what's our missing piece, like our bridge to get there. Okay, AE congruent to CE. Once again, I forgot my lines. Let me put those lines in there. A, E, right here, 
congruent to CE, okay. AB congruent to CD, okay. E is the midpoint of BD. What does that mean, the midpoint? Well, the midpoint means that it splits it in half, exactly in half. And so it means that these two segments are congruent. We could say that BE is congruent to DE. And so, and why? Because that's the definition of a midpoint. Whenever we say something's a midpoint, we mean it cuts it in half. So that's the definition of a midpoint. So now let's go back and look and see what we have. We have a side here. We have a side here. This isn't anything. It's not either a side or an angle. It's just like a piece of information. But here we have another side. So once again, we have side, side, side. This one on this page is, um, we're going to save that for class. So just skip this for now. Save it for later. Go to the next page. Okay. JL is congruent to NL. I marked them. I want to put my line segments up here. I have them as a given, but I want to mark them. The other diagrams, they were already marked. This one, they're not. I want to because it helps me if I can see it. All right, then J, or excuse me, L is the midpoint of KM. What does midpoint mean? It means it splits it in half perfectly. And so that means that KL is congruent to ML. Why? The definition of a midpoint. Okay, let's look and see what we have. We have a side and a side, another side and another side. So we have this side and this side. Our options are side, 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 or side, angle, side. Could we get the third side? No, we don't have enough information for that. But we could get that angle, right? This one right here, because those are vertical angles. Now we can't just call it angle L because there's, that doesn't tell us anything. We have to call it JLK. So I'm going to say angle J L K is congruent to angle. We went J L K. I'm going to go N L M. And how do I know those are congruent? Because those are vertical angles. And vertical angles are always congruent. All right, so going back to our list, we have a side, we have a side, now we have an angle. Now keep in mind, these are out of order. It has to be in this order, side, angle, side. Now it doesn't have to be that order in the proof, but in the diagram it does. And ours is. Ours goes side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. All right, so that we, this works. We're good. All right, once again, we're going to skip this one. We can do this one in class. And let's skip down to this one. I have filled in my givens. So now I'm going to mark my diagram. WZ is congruent to YZ right here. And then we have x, z, bisects, oh boy. We've been talking about midpoint, now we're talking about bisector. It's a similar concept. Bisectors and midpoints are similar. But w, z, y, where's w, z, y? w, z, y is here. And if it bisects it, that means it makes two congruent pieces of it like this. And then finally, we need something else. So hang on a second, we need to fill in our information. We have angle w z x is congruent to angle y z x that was the one i just drew in here all right now if i look at it i have a side this is nothing this is an angle so it must be side angle side i need another side which is going to be right here so i'm going to go right here Okay, so again, this side, this is our reflexive side, so we need to put that in our list. That's going to be ZX is congruent to ZX. How come? It is the reflexive property. And I just realized that we forgot this one, so we need to say that. That's the definition of a bisector. Here we go, definition of angle bisector. And yikes, I made a big mistake, didn't I? That's not given, is it? That's a, not a good thing. Uh, we have to look and see what we have. And so we have a side here, we have an angle here, we have another side, this must be side, angle, side. And if we look at our diagram, is it in the right order? Side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Yes, we did it right. All right, we will continue to work with side, 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 and side, angle, side in class.